Hello everyone, it's Yuvia from Fiddler Tarot. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do a fun video and it's titled Show Me Your Minis. So as you can imagine, these are going to be all my smaller kind of decks and uh, it's a bit of a challenge in the sense that uh, I believe I started this challenge a few months ago with uh, Sarah from In 80s Blues Tarot. Uh, Sarah has actually done a fantastic job in trimming one of her decks and she inspired me to do the same to uh, the copy that I, ha I had the same deck that I'll show you later. But this video in general, I wanted to um, show you about a trend that I think it's uh, taking over the uh, tarot community. And uh, it's about having smaller copies of tarot decks, you know, smaller than the original tarot size. Whether, um, so today what we're going to look at is not necessarily just copies of bigger decks, but I'm just going to show you all of my mini decks. So it can be decks that are actually, um, you know, conceived to be smaller than the original standard tarot size, or they can also be decks that were or came in an original standard size, but you, for whatever reason, you trimmed them down. So let's start. I'm just gonna pick them out randomly because I have them all in my ta on my table. Um, you know what, because they're minis, I think I can actually zoom in a little bit. Uh, so we can actually have a look at the cards a little bit better. So this is the Sweet Foragers Tarot by Sam Rook and it's been published by Rockpool. And it's one of those mini decks. So um, as they all will be today. Um, I believe that uh, they have done, Rockwell has done a fantastic job with Sam's decks. All of their decks have been really, let's say, taken care of. Obviously, Sam used to have, I don't think they, if they had uh, the, the, the website anymore, the shop on the website. I'm sure they have a website, but I'm not sure they keep on selling their decks on the website. And um, I remember reading uh, in Sam's uh, account on Instagram that they were going to discontinue, let's say, the shop. I'm not sure if that actually had happened. In any case, I remember, um, you know, her, all of the, uh, the feed on their post saying that um, these were the last days in which uh, you could still get advantage of the prices. Uh, there was a huge discount on uh, their decks and I got a few of them. But this one wasn't available because I believe that Sam actually made this deck for um, exclusively for Rockpool, for Rockpool to, to publish, let's say. So it was not originally in the deck, correct me if I'm wrong, but I really do believe there was another one that has been already published by Rockpool, but I, I had the indie edition. So I think it's called Valoria in the mass market edition, but it's actually called Penelope's in the indie edition. In any case, this is the mini, it's a smaller deck um, and it's actually really cute. And I believe that there is something uh, inherently cute about smaller size deck. I don't know, it feels like they somehow have the possibility, because it's a smaller size, they have the possibility to, um, you know, have the images um, on a, a bit more on the softer side, perhaps. Uh, in some cases, they could also choose to be whimsical and, you know, soft and cute. As always with Sam's decks, I mean, they're absolutely fantastic. I think that they do a fantastic job when it comes to expressing, you know, keeping to the tradition of the AWS, but expressing their own thematics around the cards and choosing. <laughs> For example, I absolutely love the Magician card and I think this is actually Sam, or at least it looks like them. And uh, I absolutely love the way in which, you know, we can see um, the whimsical aspect of this uh, character, um, but it still exudes confidence and it's got all of the um, properties, you know, the, the skills and resources that you need in order to be able to be the magician. And, you know, even the tower card, yeah, of course, it's, uh, you know, it's a fire and everything, but it still um, looks very nice. It's probably because of the combination of the color palette as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of things all together that probably uh, reach that kind of aspect. 
and uh, I like the uh, whimsical uh, side of these characters. I like that, you know, we can still take each other seriously, obviously. I mean, look at these two old daggers, it's fantastic. There is that sense of being trapped and being stuck in a place and, uh, um, you know, the, the, the shroud covering. It reminds me of the Somnia. <laughs> of the Somya tarot because in all of the cards of the Somya you had uh, characters covered in shrouds and uh, being soaked in water so that was a very uneasy kind of feeling but anyway so this is one of my minis and uh, it was originally in this size it was conceived to be um, you know printed as a mini deck let's have a look at the rest so another Rockpool deck this is uh, rather famous it's the Squid Cake Marseille Tarot by Jess Roller. I have to say, fantastic Marseille. If you are a bit of a beginner in the Marseille uh, style, um, I really recommend it. Not just because it actually is a really cute deck. Um, as you can see, the images, uh, the characters on the images uh, look very modern. They look like, you know, it could be your university friends, uh, you know, or something like that. Uh, but the, it still retains a lot of the, um, or, or let's say 100% of the feeling of the Marseille. And um, it does have also, I believe, this additional layer of, um, again, whimsical. Uh, you see the fool, for example, there's an octopus tentacle that is, instead of the dog biting uh, the fool's bum in order to stop them from jumping, there's actually a tentacle. <laughs> I think I believe a tentacle may actually be more effective in stopping them. And obviously you have the uh, the traditional uh, rendition of the cards when it comes to the minors, but it's actually really beautiful. There is, uh, you know, there's a certain attention to details as well. Um, when it comes to the court cards, they're absolutely fantastic. I really, really love them. And as I said, I do not uh, recommend this deck just for the cards because they are um, objectively really nice, but also because the guidebook is excellent. So the guidebook gives you a really easy, direct approach to the Marseille type of reading. So it's got a bit of a description of the, um, the card in itself. And then you've got what you visually see and the symbols that that is related to. So I really find it excellent. You know, when you, when you want to study Marseille, of course you have tons of books where you can probably fall asleep at night by reading them, um, you know, on Marseille. But generally speaking, when you want something, let's say quicker, and uh, nicer in the sense that it definitely does keep your attention on. Um, you can definitely opt for this deck because it really packs the punch and uh, even though it's a mini, you know, and it's, it's an excellent choice, it's very affordable. Uh, it's a Rockpool production in Australia. I think it sells for around 18, 19 Australian dollars. So it's absolutely um, really cheap. So this is another one of my minis. And then we've come to one of the most, let's say, cruel, in the sense that uh, it really is one of those decks that, uh, I don't know, it feels like Barbara is out to get you, you know what I mean? I, uh, I like to pair this up with a very calming, very soothing kind of oracle deck. I think it's called the, the Novice Witches kind, yeah, the Novice Witches Oracle, um, I think published by US Games. Uh, because it does have the tendency to, you know, calm Barbara down a little bit. Otherwise, Barbara is really out to get you. <laughs> it's very strong, very powerful, uh, but confrontational kind of deck, the Barbara Walker Tarot. But it is one of my minis, so that's why I'm showing you uh, this deck today. And um, I think that there's either an indie deck with the standard tarot size or an original US Games uh, mass market deck, but with a standard size. I have seen it going around. Do you see what I mean when I say that Barbara is out to get you? Uh, have you ever had the, um, the impression that an artist, when choosing how, of, out of any possible way to depict a card, they actually voluntarily go for the hardest way to depict a card? This is the Barbara Walker Tarot. 
Um, it's every single one of these cards, unless it's a very positive card, but even in that way, it seems very realistic. But every single one of these cards takes the meaning of the card and it's you know it projects it onto the paper on, onto onto the actual medium onto the onto the card in such a way that it's meant to be scary it's meant to be strong it's meant to be confrontational even the nine of wands to be honest with you there's n a number of ways in which to depict this card but of course the fence obviously we are looking at a slightly different kind of interpretation of the cards i believe there is a little bit of a, it's a bit tothier than other decks. And it's possibly because of the color palette, because it's got very uh, strong, um, you know, contrast between the colors. It's got a lot of uh, use of the black in contrast with the red or the white. And some of these cards are referring back to some gods and goddesses, for example, the Queen of Swords in Kali. And don't get me wrong, I mean, it's the it's an excellent portrait of Kali, but it is a bit gruesome, isn't it? It's a bit creepy, isn't it? So obviously, imagine using this deck, um, even this card, to be honest with you, the Ten of Pentacles, it looks almost as if she were making a uh, wheel of stars out of her guts. And I'm sure that that's not the intention, but then again, it is Barbara Walker, so maybe it was the intention. <laughs> and I really like it because in spite of the fact that it is one of those decks that really kicks you in the bum, slaps you in the face, spits on you, <laughs> it is also one of the decks that I have that is actually very, very clear. It's one of the sharpest shooters that I've got. And uh, it's absolutely fantastic. I, I know that I keep on probably, I, I hear myself talking, even, you know, looking at the Four of Cups as the client. I know, I know there is a whole system that sees the Four of Cups as the client. Um, but in a way, she could have chosen a number of ways to depict that. And she, she chose this one, which is, uh, it's confront It's not creepy, but it is still confrontational. Um, and in any case, it's a beautiful deck. I mean, we have to give it to her. Uh, the imagination, the care, the also the accuracy, you know, of the picture of these cards is actually exceptional. And I wish I had the original in a standard size, but I have to say that because it's in a tin, it's actually very easy to take with me. The Ten of Wands, oppression. <laughs> So, as I said, we could stay here and have a look at all of these cards. And ironically, a card like this, it could be worse. You see what I mean? It could be worse. You know, deck that every other card is very dark and powerful. Uh, you know, the, the death card, could it be worse than that? But yeah, I, I still love it. I still love it so much. I actually take it with me when I travel quite a fair bit. So, <laughs> it's one of my minis. It's the Barbara Walk Tarot. And a completely opposite kind of tarot deck is the Orion's tarot deck by Ambisun, our own fellow Aussie from Melbourne. I believe this is the indie edition. There is a mass market edition uh, released by Rockbook with a uh, really beautiful guidebook. I don't have it yet because I'm actually really happy about this indie. And it's a mini one with the holographic uh, uh, gilded edges. And I really like it, but it's also because when this deck was still available, the indie deck at least was still available, I had the possibility to buy, to choose between this one and uh, another couple of versions of the standard size. And I remember really comparing them um, and choosing this one because ironically, it feels like the colors on this one are actually more pronounced. And I remember talking about this deck with another good friend in the tarot community and she was saying that she does have the mass market edition. And she really complained about the fact that the cards are very dark in the mass market edition. Um, I have to say they're not dark at all. I mean, not of course, when you compare them to a very light deck, these cards are rather dark. But what I mean to say is that being with this kind of uh, eggplant colored background, um, they could be darker. So I'm actually not complaining. I find that um, the dark background has a lot of contrast with the uh, lighter colors of, uh, you know, the uh, the figures, the, the the uh, object, or in this case, the animals 
that you can find in the card. So I'm actually quite happy about this version. And because I heard a lot of people complaining about the darkness of the mass market edition, I don't think I'm ever gonna get that. It's a mini, it's very practical. I can take it with me. The, the box it comes in is very sturdy. So I don't have, you know, it's not a teen uh, box, but it's fine, it works as well. Um, and I really love it. I remember seeing this Night of Wands the first time and thinking that it's absolutely gorgeous. So I really, really enjoy this stack. And it's another one of my minis. And there's another mini, and this one is really, really mini. It's tiny. It's the Tarocchio Universali by Sergio Toppi. This is from the 90s. Um, it cost so much, 10,000 liras, which is about possibly about well counting for inflation and everything i think it's about six euros um probably a bit less um so this deck is from the 90s and it's a majors only unfortunately i don't remember whether there is a full tarot deck uh, but i do know that sergio Toppi is also the author of the tarot of the origins and uh and which is now renamed it has recently republished by Los Carabao it's been renamed Primordial Tarot I think but I really want a copy of the older Tarot of the Origins because it looks really nice it's got it had different kind of uh, setup so this is a majors only I absolutely love this deck so much apart from the fact that it's very rare now it's difficult to find when you do find it it's quite expensive but it just reminds me of the 70s. Not that I was, I was alive obviously in the, I'm a 70s child, but I was tiny. I was a little girl when the 70s ended. So I don't necessarily remember much of the 70s, but anything that to me expresses the concept of the 70s together with the jeans with the bell bottom or flares, um, you know, you can really see it in these cards, I believe. Um, there is that sense of, uh, you know, the, the color perhaps or the makeup used in uh, some of the characters. This card reminds me so much of the 70s, probably because unconsciously I may have a photo of my mom looking like this. You know, she was really beautiful. She actually uh, used to work sometimes as a model and she participated to Miss Italia. <laughs> she actually went, went quite far ahead. She didn't win or anything, but she was really beautiful. And, uh, and she would have been uh, still healthy in the 70s. So um, I probably do have photos of my mom looking like this and subconsciously I'm just really, you know, connecting this, the card with the 70s. I just really, really love these. And now I really look forward to be able to find other decks by Sergio Topi because I really like his style. But these cards, as you can see, are tiny, absolutely tiny. And the next one is actually a deck that I used to have and then for some reason I lost in one of my many uh, moving, you know, <laughs> when I was moving from one country to the other and I was doing my best not to lose any tarot deck. Uh, this is the, um, there's a few different names. I think this is in any case produced by Running Press. I think it's out of print now, but in many countries it's still easy to find. In others it's not so easy. I was looking for it and I found someone selling it on eBay for like 400 US dollars, which is, I believe, an exaggeration. I think I found this one also on eBay for like $50 and I still think that I actually overpay for it. But the reason why I accepted to overpay for it is because indeed I used to have it and then I lost it and I kind of had this sense of nostalgia related to it and so I thought to myself, you know, even if uh, normally I would not have spent that much money on it, I'm actually quite happy to do so. And then I got it and ironically I put it back in order and then I stopped looking at it <laughs> because, you know, sometimes it is what it is. Um, and it's called, sometimes it's actually called Taranova, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so these are the bags, they're quite cute. And uh, you know, it's not entire, it's not 100% square, it's actually more rectangular because it's taller than it is wider. Which means for me that it's actually slightly easier to shuffle. It does have a really big bow, I don't know if you can tell, it really feels uh, bowed. Um, and that depends on the fact, I believe, it, I received it this way. Um, I think that, um, you know, um, there's a lot of inks in this card, you can tell, and it's a glossy kind of cardstock, uh, which on the one hand, it makes the color pop, 
uh, but on the other hand uh, there's a lot of when you put a lot of inks and glue and a heavier top coat on uh, cardstock you would have the possibility of getting the the, the bars or the warping on uh, the card um, it's really it's a nice deck it's obviously pipish as you can imagine as you can see but it's still you know conveying that sense of the card uh, because of the symbology that is actually used so I really like it it's um, it's nice um, I love the court cards you know, look at the Queen of Wands for example isn't she beautiful with the dress like that it's really nice and uh, I believe that you know when you need a mini sometimes you just grab one of these because it's got everything you need it's got uh, it even comes with a guidebook if you can believe it I think it also comes with a like a um, a spread uh, a spreadsheet or something like that um, not a cloth but something uh, you know you can use as a spread um, I love the Seven of Swords with the expression of the mouse, you know, looking back, uh, side eyes, you know, thinking, oh, I gotcha, you know, I did it. And um, it's it's nothing special, like it's not something, you know, particularly incredible, but it is, it's very nice. And <laughs> look at this Five of Pentacles, isn't it so cute? It's whimsical. And so I really, really, I'm really happy that I found this deck and it's now back in my collection. So this is the another one of my minis. And this is a more recent acquisition. And to be honest with you, the only reason why I bought the mini version of this deck, the Tower of the Unknown, is because I really wanted any version I could find of the Tower of the Unknown without having to spend hundreds of dollars. Um, I would have preferred the Beyond the Wall edition, so if you don't, it, it's related to a, a TV show, obviously, and uh, and it's got all of the characters in it. Um, if you're familiar with the show, I think, well, it depends on your country, obviously, but I think you can still catch it on, perhaps, on YouTube somewhere, I believe. Um, perhaps not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's uh, it's a very when it comes to the production value to be honest with you it's very glossy and uh, the cards are very slippery but it also that makes for a very easy deck to um, overhand shuffle and also to fan and it's got a little bit of the story uh, you know um, of the deck so this is uh, this particular version it's from the outpouring of kind words and love has been overwhelming since the first collector's edition printing hit Kiss started in 2019. Now this is not for 20, from 2019, it's after that, it's been printed after that. In any case, so these are the backs. It looks very Halloween-y, as you can see, and it doesn't come with a guidebook, but it does come quite like the Maralun Tower. It comes with the cards where you have more or less the meanings or a couple of keywords for each and every card. And obviously, because they do take the names out of the uh, show, the TV show, in many cases, the um, uh, the major arcanas have been renamed. So, if you obviously, if you're not familiar with the show, to be honest with you, I wouldn't recommend this deck because you will be lost in the sense that, yeah, of course, the minor arcana you can still read with this absolutely. Um, it is a um, AWS clone after what, after all, but it is more enjoyable when you actually know the show, and um, and that's why I really wanted the other version. But that's absolutely fine. I mean, I was happy to actually put my hands on at least one of the versions. So I don't know why, but uh, I think it went out of print only a few months ago, or maybe it's not even out of print yet. And yet, it is difficult to procure, at least in Australia. But as I said, I'm very happy that I found this one. I got it for a reasonable price. It is one of my mini decks. And uh, it's it's got that sense of, uh, you know, whimsical approach to things. I really love it. And uh, well, sometimes some cards are a bit confrontational and strong. But most of them are quite nice. Even the, the Beast is actually a really beautiful card. Um, yeah, so this is another one of my minis and it's Tarot of the Unknown. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the White Sage Tarot. It's one of the most versatile tarots that, that I have. 
It is a mini in a tin and uh, this one also used to be a standard size. It feels like it's very versatile because even though it is slightly peepish, on the other hand, you still have the opportunity to see all of the symbols. If you know your RWS, you won't have any problem in reading with this deck. The major arcanas are actually really beautiful. And it's also one of my, what I call the Zen type of decks because it's actually very calming, very soothing. And I'm referring, when I talk about Zen, I'm referring to the Buddhist concept of Zen as the absence of strong emotions, the absence of desire. That, uh, you know, because it is believed in uh, the Zen philosophy and religion that desire actually causes um, moral imbalances and, uh, it, it, you know, it makes people do stuff that they shouldn't do. And so it, it drives, let's say, uh, a person to uh, do something questionable. So the, the, uh, achieve, the, the achievement that you can attain is um, to let go of all your desires. And I remember following one of my favorite uh, journalists. He's Italian, but he's been writing for the Spiegel, which is a German um, uh, magazine. And uh, it was called Tiziano Terzani. It was from uh, Firenze, Florence. And uh, it was very active in the 60s, 70s and 80s, unfortunately. I think he died in 2005, unfortunately he died of cancer. I read all of his books and, um, and he was say, he was, um, uh, he converted to Buddhism and he was saying that he could almost reach an enlightenment, but he couldn't because there was just one thing. So he could let go of everything. He let go of uh, pleasure coming from eating. So he was just nourishing himself, but not necessarily, um, you know, eating with desire. He could let go or even of his name. So at the end of his life, he did not call himself Tiziano anymore. He called himself Anam, which means, you know, without name. But there was just one thing that he couldn't let go, and it was his, his love for his wife. And um, that, yeah, that was the one thing that he, he was saying, I cannot let go of that. And so he, he said, you know, he was joking about it, saying that he couldn't achieve um, enlightenment because of that. So it's a really beautiful deck. It's got the possibility to be used uh, uh, with, uh, you know, these colors that correspond to the chakras. So if you work with the chakras, you will see these ribbon, uh, ribbons in uh, different colors and it's one of my minis and the next one is also in a tin however this one is uh, the very famous light sears pocket tarot it's a very recent uh, publication by hay house i feel like there's so many publishers that are um, you know reprinting as i was saying at the beginning of the video they're reprinting the classics into a mini version because they know that, you know, sometimes tarot readers actually need a smaller kind of deck because you need the room when you have a larger deck. Of course, you can definitely see the symbols better and you appreciate the artwork a little bit better. But I have to say in this one, the effects of having the cards smaller than the original size is that you actually feel like the colors are actually more, uh, let's say, um, probably saturated and I'm not even sure whether that's the case or not I believe I haven't actually made a side-by-side uh, -side comparison so I could be completely wrong but I think it's because they're smaller that obviously you have more of a contrast so um, the contrast it, it makes you feel as if the colors were more saturated perhaps they are perhaps they're not I don't actually know if you do know if you have uh, done a side-by-side -side compar comparison, let me know, because that, that would be very interesting. That could be the way to go, you know, when you're actually making a smaller size of a tarot deck, um, you know, charge the, uh, the colors, make them more, uh, make them pop a bit more. But I don't think so though. But in any case, I, could, I don't know, I could be wrong. I haven't looked at the original of the uh, Light Sears in a while. Uh, because uh, when I got it years ago, I used it all the time and I feel like I almost got over it. But now that I have the mini, I started using it again. Isn't that funny? I mean, sometimes just because it's a different size, it makes you appreciate the deck uh, even more. So that's another one of my minis and we're almost at the end. 
But I did want to show you a very special one that is uh, still kind of smallish. I had to open it from this side because it was actually uh, closed as if it were a package. And it's actually not that easy to remove the cards from it. Um, let me see. Okay. So this is by Il Managello and uh, it's, uh, I don't even remember the name of the deck. I don't remember the name of the deck. It's got to do with music. So there, it's a majors only deck. And uh, there's, um, there's an instrument, no, it's an opera. Yes, now I remember. So I don't remember the title, but there is a, a specific opera, um, you know, uh, for each, uh, like for example, the um, Empress is the Turandot by Guccini. Or, you know, the Don Carlos by Verdi for the Emperor and so on and so forth. Canti Gregoriani, the Gregorian chanting, uh, Romeo and Juliet by Berlioz and etc. So this is obviously re related to music, to classical music or to opera. And it's a very interesting one. It's amongst all of my minis is actually the biggest one, but it's still not standard tarot size. And I really like the star card. And that was the reason why I bought it because in Menegello, in many, many cases, what they do, they take one of the cards amongst the, uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, the deck that they're selling and they put it on top. And it, this is an actual card. It's just that it's being glued into the package. And then they put the seal, which is very artistic and I really, really like it. And so, yeah, this is one other of my minis. And now we've come to the last two decks and I have to say that these ones were a bit of a cheap but not necessarily because I did say that I was going to show you decks that were mini because I make them so. So these came originally in standard size. This is the Llewellyn deck, the Llewellyn Tarot by Llewellyn. And uh, I have done heavy modification to this deck so I trimmed off the borders except for the bottom part because it's got the title. Uh, now I feel confident enough to recognize the cards and actually, uh, you know, make it even smaller. But I actually like it this size. I think it's very balanced. And I also heavily uh, edged the uh, sides actually three or four times because, um, you know, I put some glitter ink, some orange, some darker kind of burnt orange on the corners uh, to make it look like it was uh, almost antique. And I really like this modification, but this one tends to come off, uh, especially the glitter, the, the um, uh, I think it's called Skneko um, Pearl Drops. They really tend to come off and, well, they stick well to your fingers though, don't they? <laughs> they don't stick to the cards, but they do tend to stick to your skin. Anyway, I love this deck. I love the saturation of the colors and I think that there's a lot of people that actually trimmed it down because uh, the original borders were like really wide, very, and they were washing out the colors. Instead, I think that this way, it actually makes the colors pop. And uh, it's really beautiful. I love this deck. It's very Celtic, obviously the name Llewellyn. Very Celtic, very interesting, very RWS as well. Um, but very easy to read. I must say it's a very uh, sharp shooter. It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's a joy to use. I don't know how else to express that, but it's actually one of those decks that um, even though, you know, it's, it's literally um, showing all of the cards, so it's very balanced. At the same time though, it makes you kind of eager to use it. It makes you happy, kind of happy when you use it because it is um, because of these colors, probably, because of the prevalence of these oranges, I, I don't know, I think that sometimes colors, they may actually drive your mood. And so really bright colors like oranges and reds uh, can actually have a uh, kind of a happier kind of effect on, uh, on my readings, you know, when I read these cards. Obviously, when the cards are all very intense and confrontational and negative, then you know, it's hard to translate that into something positive. <laughs> and I don't believe in spinning, you know, spinning the meaning of the cards. Uh, but sometimes you do need to be positive. 
but this is another one of my minis and the next one is actually the last one of this video that I wanted to show you and this is the tarot deck that I was talking about so I saw Sarah's modification of this deck on her Instagram account and I thought that it looks absolutely fantastic the original version was like this so it had really wide borders and uh, it made the characters feel even smaller than what they actually look. So this is the Stella's Tarot by Stella Kauruko. And uh, it's a really beautiful deck. You can find it in Stella's own uh, website. But I got mine out of eBay from an official reseller. Uh, very kind, very kind. And uh, always very worried about, has it, you know, has it been delivered yet, etc. Um, so I had a really good experience with this deck. I know that Sarah trimmed off the bottom part as well in the titles. But um, I actually prefer it this way. It's a very easy to read uh, deck. Um, also, uh, the Brass Clone, you definitely see the meaning of the cards. You don't have to search for it uh, because it's quite clear what they are. But yet I feel that there is... Um, a balance in the shape and there is a balance in the real estate of the cards with having the titles, keeping the titles at the bottom. And I really love this deck and many of these cards, not all of them, but many of these cards, this one in particular, for example, reminds me so much of Leonora Carrington's work and Leonora Carrington's artwork and, um, and her major arcanas. And I'm happy to say that finally Folder Press is reprinting Leonora Carrington's tarot. I have placed my pre-order and I'm just waiting, not very patiently, <laughs> for them to finally print it and ship it out because I've been looking for that deck for ages. And I also know that, I don't know whether it comes with all of Folger Press decks, I do have another narrow one, I have Tarot as Color, and that one doesn't come scented, but I believe that Leonora Carrington's deck originally came scented so i'm actually very curious because for some reason my benabel wen's deck so the spirit keepers decks that i have are not scented so they were originally anointed but whether it was because of uh, uh, customs perhaps they kept them there for a while mine took a while to be delivered they lost all of the scent and it's really uh, it's i'm really sad about it because Every time that I watch someone talking about Benabelle's decks on YouTube, for example, they say that they smell fantastic and neither one of mine actually smell. So it's it's really a pity. So I'm kind of curious to see whether Folgot Press is doing the same with the new Leonora Carrington's uh, deck. Anyway, this one was a, the Leonora Carrington's, is the Stella's deck, and it's really beautiful this way. I really do appreciate the colors. I believe that the images, you know, they pop out and... Uh, they feel like they can finally have a conversation with each other because these characters are actually really whimsical and it really feels like they they can have you know a dialogue uh, with each other especially when their um, the directionality is towards the sides like in this case so these were well not all of my minis I have more I have plenty of Lenormand which are you know kind of smaller and I have some other oracle decks that are kind of smaller, but I wanted to show you these ones because I believe that um, these are minis as intended to be, apart from the two that I actually modified. So it'd be really cool if you wanted to join on the tag is show me your minis. And uh, you know, it's about decks that are, have been printed as mini decks. They probably, they could also be a mini version of a larger side, size deck, or, you know, they, they could have become mini because you actually trimmed them down. So show me your minis. But that was it for now. Have a great day.